You're listening to Retro Rewind with Dave Harris. One on one on one. Retro Rewind. Dave Harris from Retro Rewind. Uh, one of the perks of the job is you get to interview a lot of uh, your f- uh, idols from when you were younger. Uh, this guy is a legend. He's been around uh, quite a while, and it's our pleasure to be talking with Davy Jones. Davy, how are you, buddy? I'm pretty good. Um, uh, I haven't been very idle either. I've been very busy. I've been traveling. You know, we go all over the, all over the place, and. Uh, Got one or two uh, dates before the end of the season, Christmas time and New Year's and all those changes that you make, you know, when the, when the year comes to an end. We just got a call, actually, this afternoon to say that we were going to be uh, performing at the uh, Silverton Casino in Las Vegas on the 27th of December. So I actually like performing there because it's a local casino and I get a chance to perform for the local people. And, you know, it's... Yeah. Vegas has got different uh, ideas in different people's <laughs> heads, you know. Yeah. But there is actually um, a, a normal American community where people actually work, live, and not necessarily in the casinos. And, and that's kind of my market, you know. Um, be safe by local. You know what? And, and you know, so th- these kinds of uh, atmospheres, you know, we're at the Canyon Club today here uh, just outside of L.A., um, is this where you feel very comfortable performing in this kind of environment? You know, something I, I thought about it, you know, and the monkeys had this like family image and they had this approachable image and um, not to be so, um, um, you know, sort of impersonal, but, um, you know, it's sort of like big in the burbs. Yeah. And some people can't handle that. I mean, I've seen so much bad behavior in, in, in the business. And I say to my friends all the time, if I was six foot tall, I'd be knocking people out all over the place. <laughs> but um, it doesn't bother me at all to to um, to be um, sort of opinionated and being you know controversial about certain things. But as the monkey song said, we may be coming to your town. You say out of L.A. Well, I think the Canyon Club here in um, in, 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 in West, is uh, it? Gore Hills, West, actually. Gore Hills, yeah. yeah. Well, my daughter used to live here, actually. My kids grew up in, in, in Santa Barbara. And so my, my daughter, Sarah, had a home here in Agora Hills up until a couple of years ago when they moved back to Santa Barbara. So, And, you know, it's never so far away. When I moved to Santa Barbara in 74, everyone says, wow, that's so, wow, God, goodness. But now we're hearing that, you know, like Jeff Bridges is there and Kevin Cosner's there and Olivia Newton-John's at and Oprah. And da, da, da. Yeah. But it wasn't the reason we went there. We went there because we had two little kids. Yeah. And in order to take them to the park, you had to go straight downhill, you know, right. out of the Hollywood Hills. And it just, you know, it was a natural family progression. And I think, you know, it, 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 as long as you're performing, it, it doesn't really matter where. And the Canyon Club is so famous. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of like the impression people have about different, um, like Disney World. We play Disney World every year. We'll be there, I think, on March the 22nd for three nights. It's the Flower Power Festival. So I just like to work, you know. People, you know, people don't um, um, get an opportunity to be able to have a, an extended career. You know, you, you know, you know, it's never been for me where, where am I now. I've always been doing something. Yeah. I started in radio as a, an actor, as a 12-year-old kid in England with the BBC doing radio plays and then I went into television with the BBC and then um, theatre and then over to America and then the monkeys and then you know in the 70s and 80s I've toured all over with Mickey Dolan's Peter Talk and one of the things that we did in 98 was Mickey, Mike, Peter and myself all four of us went to England and we did 12 concerts all around the big cities in England you know and, and it was a wonderful experience to have relived what we did all those many years before so the monkeys lives very happily in people's hearts and it touched a lot of people so I mean I'm not just gonna hide away and I'll play you know it wasn't too long ago that you know I mean like a couple of days ago I was up in my local pub and you know you know you know singing with everybody else you know when it comes on the jukebox you know people feel obligated to press daydream believer or <laughs> last train to Clarksville so yeah. I have a pretty normal existence well, let me ask you this. You know, we're certainly going to talk about what you're doing now because you're keeping very busy, as you just said. But, you know, the monkey's very, uh, very iconic. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if this is true, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you, you seem to be 
if not the busiest, the most well-known monkey. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, would you agree with that, at least perception-wise? Well, you know, everybody has their qualities. And Mike Nesmith has got his own video ranch, and he's made lots and lots of stuff. Over the years, he had singles. He had hits with yeah, Rio. A songwriter. Yeah. Rio. He had hits with um, uh, Joanna. Jo, uh, he had hits with but with um, Linda Ronstadt, you know, different drum, and he had, um, you know, many other outlets for his talent. Um, so you don't always have to be at the front of the parade carrying the flag. Right. Uh, Peter Talk has Shoe Suede Blues, which is a band that he loves to play. He loves to play smaller venues, and he used to likes to get in people's faces and play folk clubs. And Mickey Dolans has been a director, a producer. He's worked all over the world. He was in London in 78, 79. He produced and directed uh, Bugsy Malone, and that was Catherine Zeta-Jones' first appearance as a 14-year-old. Wow. He, uh, he pretty much, and she would say that, he discovered her in, in England and, and put her into her first major production. And then she obviously went on from there to do her thing. So we all have our um, um, fan bases, you know. And uh, check mine out, davyjones.net. And we have a bit of fun with it. It's not always about dollars and cents at the end of the day. It's about being able to... Um, uh, you know, reminisce and also relive some of the, the past, of course. But I have other things going on. I have a brand new album. I'm singing things that um, my dad used to sing to my mother, you know, Johnny Ray's Cry. And and um, I'm singing um, just standard songs, Fly Me to the Moon and She, Charles Aznavour. Just things, you know, I'm a baritone. And during the Monkeys, you know, it was a group put together. It was, it was, a, it, it was a, a TV show about a group. You know, the, the Beatles were the ones that started it off for everybody as far as coming into your home and not being so radical, you know. But, you know, Brian Epstein had a great idea. In 1964, I was on the Ed Sullivan show the same night as the Beatles were on. And, you know, Brian Epstein cleared the theater of all these raincoats and, and top hats. Yeah. Not top hats, but hats. Right. And the, all these people in the Ed Sullivan audience looked like you know, insurance salesmen and their wives. Well, he cleared all that and he put 14-year-old girls in there. The Beatles came on, sang six tunes with the same suits on, the same pants on, the same haircuts. So if anyone wants to call the Monkees Manufactured, the first manufactured band was the Beatles. The, 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 the Turtles, the, 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 the Beach Boys, the Association, you know, many, many bands had a... Um, um, uh, a group of musicians called the Wrecking Crew. It was Hal Blaine, Earl Palmer, Larry Nexel, Glenn Campbell. Um, all these different people played all the tracks for all these bands, you know. I mean, um, we were uh, kind of put on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the line because they said the monkeys didn't play, they didn't do this, didn't do that. Well, we did a lot of those things. We did two, over 200 concerts with just the four of us playing. So there must have been some value to our performance, and they've not been able to duplicate it since. So the monkeys was very unique, as many other bands are. And we all continue to travel as we do. Um, you know, you, I'm working tomorrow night with Gary Puckett uh, in, in Cerrito um, at the Arts Center. I'll be playing Disney World in, in March. I'll be, I'll be playing Vegas in, in December. So I, I jump about all over. I, I do theater. I do voiceovers. I've written three books. I'm writing another book right now. You know, it's called To All the Girls I've Loved Before. And um, it's not much of a kiss and tell. It's just some beautiful women and people that have been in my life that I want to put into 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 a book form. and. Uh, there's many other things on the table, okay. I just had an, a special last night on, on the documentary channel, a and &E. It'll come up again, I'm sure. And I hope we're, we'll be putting together something that um, I captured in 1970, uh, 1998, 1999, when the monkeys went to England. I filmed every single show. So I have all that footage, and maybe it's the monkeys' last performance together, and hopefully it'll be uh, something that we'll be able to show. Maybe you know snippets on the show here, you know, one day. And Retro rewind with Dave Harris. Retro rewind. Retro rewind. One on one on one.